What's up, guys? Welcome to the Tuesday Night Principal Chiropractic Call with DE and Band of Brothers. I'm Dr. Brian Moriarty, coming to you live tonight, and I'm excited to be introducing one of the big guys at DE, Dr. Drew Henderson. Dr. Drew is an Instagram master. You wouldn't think of that from his uh, country raising, but that guy is an Instagram master, and he's a uh, He's a heck of a guy, heck of a chiropractor, man. He's uh, he's one of the pillars of DE, and uh, I can't wait to hear what he's going to share with us tonight. He's going to rock the stage here, and I'm excited that you guys are all on. Don't forget, coming up uh, in just two and a half weeks, we've got the DE Intensive, June 27th. It'll be a two-session, four hours per session, all-day affair. And then on Saturday, July 4th, Independence Day, we're going to celebrate that with Dr. Sid and a Saturday Night Live all about Dr. Sid. So you don't want to miss those upcoming presentations. But for tonight, let's rock the stage here from Murrayville, Georgia. Give it up for Dr. Drew Henderson. Hey guys, um, thanks for that intro. I like the banjo music. I uh, one of my notifications is the banjo hitting, but um, I didn't really know what I was going to talk about, and I still really don't. I made this note around lunch. Uh, you know, it's not about me, and and that's really the crux of everything, right? is that it's not about me, it's not about you. The, uh, and it's easy to think our lives are all about us because, I mean, I'm the main character of my life. I'm the star of my life. So it must be about me, right? But it's not. Um, you know, we're in the selfie generation. We take 57 pictures to try to get the right picture. Um, just to post and it don't even make any difference. Um, we do 31 TikToks to try to get a dance down and, um, you know, and it's still not right. Like, I still can't, I still can't do that. Um, people do that to me at the office and I, you know, I can't do it, but, and it's okay, you know, but everything is tailored to our likes and dislikes. Our phone listens to us. That's, that's not BS. Our phone listens to us actively, and then it puts up ads that that we like or hides ads that we don't like. It's all tailored to us. You know, there's, there's kids today living that have no clue of what a commercial is. They, they don't know what a commercial is. And growing up, we'd watch maybe 10 minutes of a show. We'd have two or three minutes of commercials, you know. And and now, it's just everything is about us. It's about me. And a lot of that is okay. That, there's nothing wrong with that. I feel if I got to watch one more freaking commercial on YouTube, my head's going to blow up. That's why I pay that $12 a month or whatever so I don't see them. You know, that's about me. It's okay. I can get on my phone and hit my screen in a certain order. And 20 minutes later, Krispy Kreme show up. Like it's about me then. And that's okay. But on the other side of that coin, on the downside of that is, is when we make it about us, we lose sight of the big picture, you know? We lose sight of the big picture and the central message of DE and lasting purpose 
is that it's not about you. And it's not about us. You know, he hear that, people. Um, hear that. Like, it is not about us. It never has been. And if you if you look at the downfall of so many people, so many seminars, so many coaches, so many offices and people ever, their downfall is when they make it about themselves. You know, and it's not about us. And like all of these things are offices, DE, all the meetings we go to. Um, I'm part of our state association, all those meetings and Zoom meetings and, you know, Band of Brothers meetings, you name it. Nothing is about us. All this exists out there so people know what a clear nervous system is. You know, all this is for chiropractors and their staff who think they're living a lasting purpose life, but they're perverting it and bastardizing it for their own gain. You know, and, and that, that's true. That's just what happens. You know, and we we all trying to get our crap together, but that's just, that's what it is. And And all this is so people can live a clear life and a connected life. That's what it's about, just being connected and being clear and getting everybody out there clear and connected. And to do that, we got to get our shit straight. You know what? Um, I know a lot of this stuff going on wouldn't be happening if everybody was under care. I, I know it because then like, we get more connected to our source and, and our source is love. And that's what we need. It's more love, less hate, less evil. Um, you know, and, and I know we take our self, we take our focus off of, off of ourselves and, and we got to put it back on the people that, that we serve and that we take care of. And, and I know a lot of people have been hurt by people um, because they forgot or they never even freaking knew that it wasn't about them. You know, that it's all them. Everything's about them and it sucks for them because they don't get to live the life that we have. And it's good taking care of people. It's good loving people. It's good putting yourself out for other people with nothing else coming to you. It's not a practice building BS. You know? And like what what would we give away for the sake of this principle? You know, I don't know. You know, what what would we lose for the sake of this principle? Our friends, we have, we all have uh, relationships. You know, we've lost those. Uh, God knows I lose sleep over it and hair like right there. like, And I don't care, like whatever, it's hair. Um, but we lose stuff over this. Oh, shoot. About knocking my phone off. Um, but would we lose our life because of it? You know, I, I don't know if I would. You know, I, I love my life. Um, but there's been people that have lost their life because of this. And, and we owe it to them to do better than we are. And I, I hope we recommit ourselves to being less concerned about us and our welfare and our bank accounts and more concerned about the generations to come. You know, because if we're not, this profession won't last. You know, like we're, we're plan A and there's no plan B. You know what? There's no plan B. You know, Moses, he was a fugitive, right? He was uh, living with his father, Jethro, in 
Beverly Hills. Um, some of y'all will get that. But he's supposed to be watching Jethro's sheep. And he's walking around. You know, he sees this bush that's on fire. God talks to him. He says, listen, you got to go to Egypt. Uh, this is where he fled from from murdering somebody. He's absconded. And he's like, listen, you got to go tell Pharaoh. You got to let the people go. You got to let Israelites go. And what Moses do? He come up with every freaking excuse he could not to go. He's just like, oh, nah, like, you know, what if they don't believe me? You know, what if they don't listen to me? You know, and we're, we're really good at that, aren't we? We make up excuses of why we can't do something. And the excuses just pile up. I know I do them. You know, that's that's why I still hadn't done like videos for the office because I, I hate seeing myself in freaking videos. It drives me nuts. I can do like a face swap and laugh and that's good. But, oh, you know, let me ask you something. You, you ever felt um, insignificant you know I I have I do a lot of the times I know uh, year 20 something years ago I used to work for the state um, I worked with Zell Miller under his administration and and at the governor's mansion and like just a few of us were out there right just a few of us um, I met Bill Clinton three times, and uh, the third time, he knew my name. You know, I was going to school at night over here at Gainesville College, little junior college. I was working down there during the day. He's like, hey, Drew, how's school? You know, like, I had to go in there and, like, tell Shirley, that was the governor's wife, that there was a phone call, you know, all that stuff. And that's when he said that. And I'm like, you know, the most powerful man in the world knows what I do. He knows my name. He didn't know I went to Gainesville College, a little junior college, and like took Spanish nine times. Nine times. Um, I failed it seven times. You know what? Um, we had to have two credits. I finally passed. Then later, uh, the next week or two, Truett Cathy was there. He's the one that started all the chicken fillets, right? All the chick fillets. Um, and, you know, shoot, I go see him. My head's probably this big. Um, I was riding high then. Go meet him, introduce myself. I'm like, hey, listen, if you need anything, let me know. You know, I'm your man, right? Let me know if you need anything. He reached into his blazer pocket, pulled out some uh, little cards, uh, like business cards, you like, how about put these at, at every seat? And it said free chicken sandwich. You know, I, I felt tiny then. I shouldn't have. I was 20. Um, but I felt insignificant. You know, and I shouldn't have. Like, it, it just, but that's just a thing that just pops into my head then. Um, and I, I felt like I was the wrong person for the job. You know, you ever felt like you're the wrong person for the job, you know, that you, you didn't have enough of something or that your contribution wouldn't mean anything, not anything much anyway. Um, felt like you didn't measure up to the people around you. I don't know where to look on this camera there. I think, um, you know, um, Moses struggled with being insignificant, right? But his doubts were still about him. It was self-preservation. It was, you know, what if they don't believe me? What if, what if they don't listen to me? And and like what God asked him, he's like, what's in your hands? He knew what was in his hands, but he asked him. You know, so he would have to say, he said, and it, it was a stick, like just a freaking crude shepherd's staff, you know, probably didn't even have a crook on it, just a stick. 
And if you read more of that, you know that stick helped transform the future of the world, right? Just a freaking stick. So, like, what do we have in our hands? You know, we got power in our hands. You know, we have the ability and the power to to move a freaking bone and and that person gets better. You know, life comes back to that person when we adjust them. You know, we, we have that power. We know how to do that. We don't have to seek it out. We don't have to search it. We know it. We just have to tell people that we know how to do this and get them in the office and do that to them and then let them express more life and then they get better. You know, but we, we struggle to believe that whatever our efforts are, our abilities, our gifts, our assets are, that they're not worthy, they're not valuable, and that they're just not enough. You know, we, we struggle with that. And we look at what's in our hands now, and and we wonder, and we know it, it may not be much, you know, but it's enough. Like, it don't take much to move a bone. It don't take much. We don't need anything else. You don't need to rub on them. You don't need to slather them with gel and stuff. But if you do that, that's okay too. But but you don't need to. That life inside of them does that. That's the only thing we do is remove interference to life. Till late this morning, if I cut you, you're going to heal up. Two minutes after you die, if I cut you, you won't because that life is not there anymore. That's the only thing that heals us. The only thing we do is remove interference to that life so you can heal like you're supposed to. You know, but but what are we holding in our hands today? Is it like your office, your family, your finances, your relationships? your hobbies, whatever they are. But whatever you got and whatever you, you're working with, uh, it can be transformed. You know, talk to Moriarty about his office transformation. Talk to Andy Harding about his. And they'll be happy to tell you. They'll be happy to tell you about stats and, and, and the day that, I decided this was going to be it, and this is what happened. Two months later, this happened. Two years later, this happened. On a side note, on the way back, what does it say Moses was carrying? It's that same stick, but what did it become? It became the staff of God. It changed like that. It changed like that. And I'm not asking you to be something you're not. Like, be you. Be freaking, like, be uniquely you. But know what Dynamic Essentials is? The DE. Know what the DE is. And the DE, the Dynamic Essential, is becoming aware, humble, and obedient to the voice of God within you. And then when that happens, you become dynamic. And that is essential to everything in your life. Everything. That's what DE is. It's not some practice building seminar. But you'll grow because you're being aware, humble, and obedient. But that's not all it is. And know what lasting purpose is. You know, know what lasting purpose is. It's giving for the sake of giving, serving for the sake of serving, loving for the sake of loving, doing for the sake of doing, out of your own abundance. This is a kicker with no expectations in return. A uh, a friend of mine, me and him, we talk a lot. We go back and forth with stuff. And um, sometimes it gets a little heated. Sometimes it doesn't. But, but we mean no harm. We love each other and we, 
we raising each other up as we go. And, and he says, he's not pulling me up, but he is, you know, he is. So, you know, who you are, you, you, you pulling me up too. Um, a few weeks ago, he was struggling with lacking purpose. He, he said he, he, he didn't really know what it was and said that maybe it was because his, his uh, maintenance fee was, you know, affordable. And I'm like, that's not it, because if they didn't pay you, they wouldn't be on the maintenance plan. You know, you're expecting something. I adjust you maintenance wise and you got to pay me. If you don't pay me, hell, I ain't doing it. That's not lacking purpose. I'm like, read the book. So we read the book. The next week, he's like, you know, it's changed me. Everything's changed. I'm signing people up. This works. They get it. Some of them, it ain't about that either. It's not practice building. It's not freaking practice building. Then the next week, this, <laughs> it sounds like I'm making this up. I, I'm not. Um, the next week, he called me. This was Friday. He was like, oh, shit, I went dark. I'm back. Um, he was like, listen, I get it. It's not about that. It's so fulfilling to me. It fills me up. I'm like, no, dumbass, that's not it either. There's no expectations. Like when we're expecting to be filled up, we put expectations and attachments to it. It don't matter. Just freaking give, love, serve, and do just because you do it. You know, and it don't matter how you feel. You know, just just serve people. Just serve people. And You know, he, he asked me, he's like, well, well, what'd you do? And I'm, this is a nothing thing, but we, uh, there's a kid in here. He's like 16. He just bought his first car. It was like a freaking jalopy, freaking crap box. It was painted different colors and smoked when he pulled in. He was proud of it, though, like. Third, fourth time, his parents let him leave the house. He'd come up to the office. There was eight or nine people in there. I was by myself. And, um, you know, he was talking about it. And when he left, I'm like, hold on, man. I'm going to go out there with you. I told people in the office, I'm like, listen, hang out just a minute. I'll be right back. I went out there and just talked to him about his car. You know, I'm like, dude, this is awesome. Look up YouTube. You can learn how to paint it yourself. There's one guy that's painted with the foam roller. And it don't look bad. It's a good car. You know, I'm proud of you. I got to go. But he just freaking lit up. You know, and it didn't take a minute, like literally a minute to go do that. Um, and I'm not patting myself on the back. I mean, I said some stuff yesterday to a freaking family that they probably won't be back now because she got out of her car. She's pregnant with her second baby, second dad. The other one's less than a year old. Um, that the other boyfriend, whatever, has custody of it, and she's smoking. It would be more loving if if I talk talk to her about that, and I'm just like, listen, if you keep smoking, you can't come in here anymore. You want to be healthy, but you're killing your baby. So get your shit straight. And I mean to say that, I said that to her. You know, and they probably won't come back. I even like made sure my security cameras were working like on the outside. So if they vandalized the place, I could turn them in. So, you know, I don't have my crap together either. You know, we, we all working through this stuff. So so when when you see me and I'm struggling or slipping, like tell me. I need to know because I'm not seeing it. And if I tell you, I don't mean any harm because I expect you to tell me like we're all in this thing together and we got to serve people. We got to see people. And, you know, if her legs hurt and her hips hurt, it's okay. Got to see more people. 
get more Epsom salt. And I don't think I got anything else, but, but just serve people. And it's never, it's never about us, right? It's not about me, but um, I think that's, that's all I got. And thank you. Drew, that's all you got? That's all you got, uh, Drew? I'm I'm wiped out, bro. Dude. Literally, that, I'm wiped out this week. Dude, that was freaking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> dude, dude, you rock. I love, love, love that lasting purpose description without any expectation of anything in return. I that's love it, man. That's it. Just no expectations. Love, sir, like, dude. You're, you're a rock star, man. That was an awesome talk. I love you, man. That was just incredible. Really made my love night. You. I think it made a lot of people's nights from the comments I'm seeing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you, too. Love everybody that watched and love everybody that will watch later. Absolutely. Hey guys, share this, okay? Bottom left corner, you hit share, and you can send this out to everyone around the world. Every chiropractor you know needs to hear that message from Dr. Drew Henderson of Lasting Purpose. That was on point and unbelievable. I didn't know you met Bill Clinton, though, uh, Drew. That was, that was an interesting factoid. You didn't know what? You met Bill, Bill Clinton. Yeah, shoot, three times. He knew <laughs> me by name, bro. Hey, yeah. Drew, how's school? Struggling. <laughs> I failed Spanish again. <laughs> All right. Well, awesome, Drew. Thank you so much for being on tonight, man. You're a rock star. I love and appreciate you. Awesome, brother. Love you, too. And thank you, everybody, for being on tonight. We'll see you next week. Yep. On the Tuesday See night, principal call.